the I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast, live. You're down with Rappaport, yes I am. 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 You better tune in, IamRappaport.com. Cause every single podcast, you know he drops bombs. I seen him on set, a seasoned vet with true talent. Catch him on his way to CrossFit, rocking the new balance. He asked me to do the track, cause he know I rhyme elite. But I'm just waiting for the Robert De Niro line of the week. Breakfast of champions, toasted bagel, cream cheese, and locks. This is I Am Rappaport. The show never stops. We might catch him out in public, stretching his knees. But if you don't listen to the show, yo, wiggle, wiggle please. please. Wiggle, 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 please. This is the I Am Rappaport Podcast. What's up? This is Michael Rapport on the brand new I Am Rapport Stereo Podcast. Today we are going to be saying bye bye, bye bye to Alex Jones, the Infowars lunatic, has been banded for life, kicked off Twitter. Serena Williams is on her way to the U.S. Open Finals, and people are still up in arms, completely irate over the Nike Colin Kaepernick situation. They're more upset over Kaepernick and Nike than they get over mass school shootings. All that and more on a brand new Smash Mouth I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast. Miles Jordan. Yeah. Let me get something funky. Oh, you fucks you. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. 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 Football makes its long anticipated return to living rooms all across America this week. That means bragging rights and huge cash prizes are up for grabs at DraftKings.com, the leader in one-week fantasy sports. I love one-week daily fantasy football at DraftKings because you choose when to play and who to play. Draft a new team every week with no season-long commitment at DraftKings. You are the GM. You are the team owner. You just draft your players, stay under the salary cap, and see how your team stacks up against the competition. Take on all contenders. The best thing about DraftKings is no matter what your skill level is, there's a contest waiting for you at DraftKings to celebrate week one. DraftKings is hosting a free team pick'em promo this weekend. Download the app or go to DraftKings.com now. Use the promo code RAPAPORT, R-A-P-A-P-O-R-T. All you have to do is pick at least half of the winning teams correctly, and you'll win a share of a million bucks. It's simple. The code is RAPAPORT, R-A-P-A-P-O-R-T, only at DraftKings, the game inside the game. Eligibility and restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash pick'em for details. All right, this is the I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast. My name is Michael Rappaport, a.k.a. the Gringo Man Dingo, a.k.a. the Jake LaMotta of Podcasting, a.k.a. White Mike, a.k.a. Bird. I'm here with G. Moody's last name rhymes with duty, a.k.a. the Black Ed McMahon. We're in the place to be. Uh, how you feeling, G? I'm good, man. Everything's good. Just uh, holding on. It's very hot out here, so... Just holding on. Everybody knows who's in New York knows how muggy it's been. It's terrible. Well, I'll be making my way back to New York uh, in a few days. I am on the atypical season two uh, press tour. I'll be back in New York City. So it's really fucked up there, huh? Yeah, man. It's really, the humidity is something else. And it's been like really high uh, temperature, like 85, 90 with... 80%, 70% humidity is just like intolerable. It's just, oh, just really crazy, man. Um, so much to talk about. First of all, uh, I Am Rappaport Podcast Day, National I Am Rappaport Podcast Day. That was September 4th, 2018. Went off without a hitch. Uh, I want to uh, thank everybody who celebrated and acknowledged National I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast Day. Next year, we're looking forward to uh, to it again, and we're trying to get it to be international 
I am Rappaport Stereo Podcast Day. Uh, but great response from the fans, uh, longtime listeners, new listeners, people that are sometimey listeners. Uh, uh, we got a whole bunch of emails, comments, social media, and all that stuff. Uh, uh, how great would it be, Mr. Moody, uh, to uh, uh, push things internationally next year for, for International I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast Day? Oh, it's, it'll be great, man. That, that's what's going to happen. That's part of the course of events. So I expect that for next year. That's what, that's what time it is. Um, we can't go any further in this episode without acknowledging the passing uh, of one of the great stick men, one of the great movie stars uh, of all time, one of the great iconic Americans of all time, the great Burt Reynolds, passed away at 82 years old. Um, he is somebody that sort of went under the radar uh, in a lot of discussions about Stickmen, but we have always acknowledged his greatness. He's He's been a married man. Now, although he, uh, the great Burt Reynolds had the persona and the look of a fantastic stickman. He was married for great periods of his life. He put in fantastic work as a stickman. Of course, the iconic uh, uh, Playboy cover uh, of him, chest naked. He was yeah. completely butt ass naked, but with the with the the grizzly hairy chest, proud of his chest hairs. Um, <laughs> represented what it's like to just be a kick ass. Badass motherfucker on film. He was a football player. Started acting uh, because of his charismatic personality and his and his uh, stickman like great looks. Um, he personified everything that had to do with being a stickman and the stickman culture. Um, humongous movie star. At one time, he was the uh, actually the biggest movie star in the world. Uh, uh, starring, Dang. of course, the the Longest Yard, Smokey and the Bandit, uh, and, and the iconic film Deliverance, uh, where uh, uh, the wilderness people, the guys that were coming out of the backwoods of the Georgia wilderness, were trying to literally pig fuck Burt Reynolds and his friends, um, which has been uh, you know uh, d you know was, was sort of uh, referred to in the movie Pulp Fiction. When uh, Bruce Willis and Ving Rhames uh, uh, getting, uh, you know, hogtied and all that, and they brought out the gimp, that was a total homage to the movie Deliverance. Oh. Um, the looks, the charisma, the sense of humor, the cannonball run, the stuff with Dom DeLuise. Um, you know, what can I say? I mean, Burt Reynolds was, uh, if you're our age, he truly was a, a, a tremendous movie star, a great actor, had a great sense of humor. His appearances on the Johnny Carson show, uh, again, if you're our age, you, they, they were totally unique. He would be cracking up, cracking up Johnny Carson. Uh -huh. um, yeah. <laughs> you know, in the 80s and in the 90s, the tabloids were relentless on him because of his looks, and he, uh, you know, had financial problems, and he was married to uh, uh, Lonnie Anderson, and, you know, the tabloids just harassed him and harassed him and harassed him for years um, and of course, he had the iconic performance in the uh, uh, classic film Boogie Nights with Mark Wahlberg, Paul Thomas Anderson. Um, I had a chance of working with him in a small movie. I can't even remember the name of the movie. It was with Ray Romano and uh, the fuck is that comedian's name? Oh. I'm sorry. I can't remember. It's not a good movie. I got to work with him, spend some time with him. He had a very good, very distinct, dry sense of humor. And uh, uh, just celebrate um, the stick man, the icon, uh, American fucking movie star, true blue American movie star. He really was that dude for a long period of time. The great Burt Reynolds uh, with the grizzly chest hair uh, uh, and the charismatic uh, ways and laid back kick ass charm uh, has passed away at 82. Stick man down. Stick man down. Yeah, yeah. I I always like uh, Burt Reynolds, especially in uh, Smokey and the Bandit with my man Jerry Reed. And uh, what's the guy uh, from uh, Honeymooners? Jackie Gleason. That, that was always my favorite. Yep, yep. Yeah, I mean, it was, a, it was a different time in film. It was like you could put somebody like Burt Reynolds in, in these movies 
and and he just was so beloved that people would come and see him. And those Cannonball Run movies um, and the outtakes, I always remember as a kid with Dom DeLuise, yeah. they were actually a part of the movie. They would show the outtakes of them laughing and him smacking Dom DeLuise and him getting so mad at Dom DeLuise. And, uh, uh, you know, I mean, Burt Reynolds was just an icon. He had a tough life, man. The last 20 years of his life have been tough with, uh, you know, the health issues, financial issues. And, you know, he went broke a couple of times and, you know, and just sort of became uh, paranoid. You know, he didn't even want to do the movie Boogie Nights. It's wow. been well documented. He didn't. He didn't even see uh, a Boogie Nights. Uh, I don't think he ever saw the the full film. I, th- I just think he just lost perspective on things. He lost trust. Uh, and and you know, fame could do that. You know, it's it's ruined a lot of people and 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 money and who the fuck knows. But Burt Reynolds, fantastic movie star, fantastic stick man, has passed away at eighty two. And salute and shout out to the great Burt Reynolds. Yep. Yes, indeed. So, uh, football week one has officially started. Football week one has officially started. And one of the biggest stars in the NFL, Le'Veon Bell, who I'm a fan of, uh, who I did not draft in any of my drafts, um, although uh, the experts... And the insiders said that he would be playing. He, as of right now, and and I don't think anything's going to change by the time Sunday comes around when the Pittsburgh Steelers play, he is not playing week one. He is holding out for more money. Um, And and this is the first time uh, his teammates, linemen, actually have started uh, uh, commenting and and criticizing uh, about, you know, the fact that you know, they play and they get certain amount of, uh, uh, they get money and, you know, they've played certain amount of seasons and, you know, it's showing a real dysfunction amongst the Pittsburgh Steelers who are a close-knit group. You know, Mike Tomlin, these guys keep, you know, things in-house. Uh, they're emotional dudes. But for, you know, his offensive linemen that block for him to be coming out uh, uh, sort of, you know, not having his back and speaking on it, to me, it seems like uh, this is a, a really... A fucked up situation that's not going to get any better uh, with Le'Veon Bell. I'm glad I didn't draft him in my teams. Uh, I, I, yeah. And we told everybody all season, uh, me, uh, uh, Jordan and Miles, the Dust Brothers, know your guys, get your guys. And just as important it is to know who you want to draft, it's just as important to know who you don't want to draft. And and we stayed away from Le'Veon. I had a chance to get him in one draft and we said, fuck no. Uh, because uh, just because of this, and I don't care who you are, how great you are, if you don't go to training camp and and you're not taking those reps, I don't care what you're doing at the CrossFit Center and then your, your early morning workouts, it's going to take a couple of weeks for you to get back in rhythm because you're a human being uh, uh, just like everybody else. Uh, yeah. Hey, uh, what about the, the players? I thought it was all about team. I thought it was all about sticking together. Stay out of this man's pockets. He's trying to... Uh, renegotiate for more money. He's doing what's best for himself. And the other players, yo, uh, you guys know that. So stay out of that man's pockets. Like, whatever it is, yo, we behind him. If he if he plays, if he doesn't, we want the best for Le'Veon. But no, you shit on him because he wants more money. What, what's wrong with wanting more money? He has he has value. He has a, he's, he's the, uh, the top back, basically, in the league. So shut your mouth. You play the game and don't worry about homeboy. That's how and, I look and, at it. And I why go to the media with it? Like, call him up and deal with him yourself. You guys have been teammates for a long time. You know, yeah. have a team meeting. Be like, yo, we want you. Whatever. Go into the media It just fuck up things in the future because that resentment doesn't go away. Anyway, yeah. why, why? I, I, I didn't exactly. pick him. And football is officially underway. And I'm, yo, I am hyped. I am hyped for all of it. I'm hyped for my man Odell Beckham and the Giants to play the Jaguars. I talked about this the other day on the Premium Podcast. Jalen Ramsey, one of the great shit talkers in all the sports, uh, versus Odell Beckham, who uh, you know can fall into traps, but he's getting 65 million reasons, 65 million uh, dollars guaranteed money. I think 95 million total to not fall into any shit talking traps. But that's going to be a great game. Uh, Saquon Barkley and the, the whole league's on display like it's going down 
uh, uh, Sunday, Monday, for the next 18 weeks, it's going down, my friends, and to the playoffs and all that shit. Yeah, I know. Uh, I, I see the Odell thing. I was like, man, he got rewarded. He got a great contract. And uh, based on the legacy the uh, in the playoffs with him dropping the balls, I just didn't see how that, that, that came through. I thought Antonio Brown should be, of the Pittsburgh Steelers, should be the highest paid player because he does it in the playoffs. Homeboy dropped passes in the playoffs. At, in, in the fucking, in the pregame, homeboy's catching balls with his ass cheeks. But in the playoffs, he's dropping the ball. So I thought Antonio should be the highest paid. Yeah, well, but I'm sure Antonio's going to get his money. And I think the Steelers are going to be good. I think the Patriots are going to be good. I think the Saints are going to be good. I think that the, you know, the Eagles are going to be a problem. The Rams are going to be good. The Jaguars are going to be good. And, and, you know, everything is barring injuries and how all that stuff plays out. But it's going to be a high-flying, high-scoring NFL season, especially with the rule changes. And I just hope everybody, uh, whether I like you or don't like you, gets through the season healthy. Uh, and and uh, I can't wait for football to the full slate coming on, on Sunday. Yeah. And uh, all the new rule changes, I'm looking forward to see how, how that's going to play out. I'm sure it's going to change the game. They're trying to change the nature of the game with all the, uh, the helmet rule and all this stuff where you can't lower your head and everything and tackles. It's going to change. It's, it's going to be a different season. You may not like it like you think you may. <laughs> Yeah, I think, the, you know, they, these rule changes always come into play. The, the players will figure it out. The refs will figure it out. And, uh, uh, you know, it's going to put a lot of points on the board. Uh, I know that. And uh, so I, I think for, like, the high-powered offenses like the Rams, like the Saints, uh, uh, you know, uh, those teams are, you know, like I think Minnesota, like the, the offenses have such an advantage. It's just like basketball. People want to see points. People want to see – uh, you know, threes, people want to see dunks. Same thing with the NFL. People want those points, and I just hope everybody's safe. Um, speaking of points, uh, Tiger Woods was invited to the Ryder Cup. Tiger Woods is playing in a tournament uh, right now. I, I don't know what tournament it is. I, I, don't, I don't follow golf. I could give two shits about golf. It's a fucking snooze fest, whether Tiger Woods is playing good or not. Um, uh, listen. Uh, we can't. We can only beat a dead horse so much. You can have a great round of golf, Tiger, but until I see somebody get you on Instagram or or social media chilling in the back of a Red Lobster or an Applebee's, I don't give a fuck. You ain't winning anything. I don't know how many times we have to say it. I have a feeling that you're you've heard from me and you've heard from the I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast, but until you are in the back of a Red Lobster with your feet on the table, nursing a beer, and some, you know, sevens or eights on the scales of 10 white chicks. Until I see that, I don't expect you to actually win a tournament. I don't think you could really follow through with a win until you go full Tiger Woods. <laughs> Why? They, they report like he wins. Like, like he wins. The, he, don't, he comes in like fucking 50th, and it's like a big thing. I don't understand. Yo, He's he's not winning anymore. So yo, we need another guy. Who who's 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 someone else? This guy uh, don't got it. <laughs> I know, I know. You know, I have a couple of rounds of great golf, but you ain't gonna really get on that streak until you really get on that stroke. Um, yeah. Serena Williams is on her way to the U.S. Open finals. She busted through the semis, and she is playing in the U.S. Open finals Saturday. Uh, you know, obviously the world is, is watching, everybody is rooting for Serena Williams and hopefully, you know, she wins it. Um, and then she could go back to, you know, the pressure will be off because there's so much pressure on her. Um, and, and everybody that she plays against has nothing to lose and they play like they have nothing to lose because, you know, the crowd is, is watching Serena Williams, uh, uh, you know, and, and rooting for Serena Williams. So it's so biased and I, I am too. But, they, you know, I, I just hope that this – it's just – it's a lot of pressure for an athlete to deal with. So I hopefully uh, oh. she'll win this tournament, she'll win this U.S. Open, and, uh, you know, she could go back to just, you know, playing and, and not everybody just on her every single move. Yeah, but it, it would be a surprise if she didn't win because everybody's expecting her to win. So uh, she's the greatest. So, I mean, I, I expect her to win. I don't, I don't expect anything else. It would surprise me if she didn't. 
So that's Serena Williams. It, yeah, I mean, to me, it's like she dictates whether she's going to win or not. Sometimes throughout her career, e even at her, her greatest, uh, the pressure gets so much, and you could see it getting to her in the quarterfinals match. At one point, it looked like she was going to cry. Literally, in the first uh, set, she wasn't playing well, and I think that sort of release uh, of that moment that was played all over the sports networks of her looking like was a, she was going to cry, literally cry, got her back on track. But I think sometimes like the pressure and the crowd and the, you know, she's a queen and, you know, playing for all the moms, I, I think it could be too much. But, but you know how we feel uh, about Serena at the Iron Rapport Stereo Podcast, one of our favorite athletes. I don't mean oh, men or that. women, one of our favorite athletes of all time. What, did did they let her wear the cat suit or I, I didn't see did she nah, wear she, some she's crazy rocking, shit? She don't she don't rock the uh, cat suits at the U.S. Open. Um, she's rocking tutus like Nike tutus dresses, but you know they're fly. They're they're custom. She looks dope. She looks gorgeous. Oh yeah, and she she's just out there you know kicking ass. I mean I'm sure she'll she'll rock the cat suit when she wants to. I think it's because of the weather. She can't. It's too hot to even rock a cat suit in New York right now. Oh, oh okay. Um, so. BT, the Bobby Brown story. Shout out to my man Woody, played Bobby Brown. Shout out to the producers of the Bobby Brown uh, movie. Again, this movie, uh, uh, ratings, kicked ass in the ratings. Uh, a lot of uproar over uh, the way Whitney Houston was depicted, the way Bobby Brown was depicted. In part one, as I discussed in the premium episode, Janet Jackson was depicted as Bobby Brown's jump off. And and what Bobby uh, Janet Jackson, uh, you know who who uh, you know people got so upset with me when when I discussed her and Justin Timberlake, they got so upset with me. But in this movie, uh, it appears that at one point, while Janet Jackson was engaged, remember when she was engaged when she she married that uh, that backup dancer, the the, the Spanish dude. Yeah. They, oh. The backup dancer get Janet Jackson. <laughs> yes, yes. And while she was engaged to that backup dancer, uh, Bobby Brown was sneaking in on the down low, straight sugar dicking. Uh, uh, oh, and she man. was doing this behind her fiance's back, the great Janet Jackson. She's another one who people, they just, they call her a queen. They they call her all these things. They put her on a pedestal. Meanwhile, Bobby Brown was was cold smashing that ass. Uh, while she was engaged, um, and and people were in uproar about that, uh, the movie is very good. You know, it was the second part of the film should uh, you know just be like called the crack years because it's just the crack and the devastation and the fallout. Bobby Brown and Whitney Houston's family from all the drug use. It's it's definitely it, it doesn't pull any punches. I mean, Bobby Brown, he's like a fucking cat. Uh, he, he like lived nine lives, like the, yeah. the type of shit that he's been into, being shot at, car accidents, the drug uses, drug overdoses, you know, heart issues, you know, losing his wife, losing his daughter, losing his mom. I mean, it's just one thing after another thing after another thing. Yeah. Bobby Brown, like uh, all the drugs didn't affect him. Like crack, he, he went through that shit like nothing. Like, oh, all right, what's next? <laughs> yeah, it, it didn't it didn't stop him at Bobby all. Bobby Brown's a motherfucker. Yeah. He's a... Uh, Nine lives. He he's, but it's good that he's alive, man. He had he had a, a crazy life, man. Yeah, man, crazy life, crazy life. So if you haven't seen the the Bobby Brown movie on BET, you should definitely check it out. Um, I, I really enjoyed watching it. Uh, uh and first and foremost, uh, you should definitely check out uh the show that I'm proud of, Atypical. Season two premieres uh September seventh on Netflix. Season two premieres September seventh on Netflix. Uh, check it out. Check me out. Uh, it's it's definitely not the Gringo Man Dingo that you're uh, used to on the Iron Rap Poor Stereo Podcast. It's more of like a a guy that can't uh, uh, articulate his emotions. Of course, uh, me, the Gringo Man Dingo, aka uh, White Mike, aka White Folks. I have no problem articulating my emotions, but that's why it is acting. So I love to hear what you guys think about uh, uh, Atypical Season Two, and you can check out Atypical Season One on Netflix. Stream it, binge it, pass it around. Uh, and let me know what you think about it. Um, all right, people ask me for advice all the time. Who's going to win? Why they're going to win? And so on and so on. Listen, I can never guarantee you who's going to win. But I could tell you one thing. If you're going to play and you think you know who's going to win, if you got a hunch, if you got a gut instinct, you got to check out my bookie. Remember, who you're betting on is just as important as who you're betting with. 
That's why I always tell people to use my bookie. Trust me, guys. They are the best of the best. I only guarantee people and places and companies that I have done business with, and they have been fantastic to me. Okay? You play, you win. That's why I'm urging you to make your way to mybookie.ag. You play, you win, they pay. They have in-game, live betting, the most rewarding player perks in the business. And for you fantasy guys out there, you can even bet the over, under on how many fantasy points a player will score each game. Join now and my bookie will match your deposit dollar for dollar. That's dollar for dollar. Use the promo code Rappaport, R-A-P-A-P-O-R-T to activate the offer. Trust me, visit my bookie online today. That's my bookie, M-Y-B-O-O-K-I-E. And don't forget to use the promo code Rappaport when creating your account to claim up to $1,000 in free play. You play, you win, you get paid at mybookie.ag. Alex Jones, that fucking lunatic. Oh, the what, Info what, Wars guy. What's up with the, him? The uh, conspiracy theorist, uh, Big Mouth, who said that the, the 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 shootings at the preschool were staged. He said so many rotten things, so many terrible things. He's gone off of Twitter. He's finished. They banned that fuck for life. Oh, bye bye, fucko. Oh, I don't even know if this guy could eat, hear podcasts anymore. Bye bye, asshole. Damn. Bye bye, you fuck you. Damn, he needs that to spread those conspiracy theories, man. He needs that. Yeah, need- well, it's over now. <laughs> it's over. It's too bad, fuck. Damn, too, Alex. F- too fucking bad. Alex Jones, you're gone, asshole. So what about uh, um, Instagram and Facebook? What, what's up? They banning him too? Uh, I don't know if he's banned on Facebook. Um, I'm not sure, but I know that they they suspended him or they, they shut him down on YouTube and then uh, the word just uh, came in that they they shut him down for good. They didn't suspend this asshole. That's crazy. They shut this piece of shit down for good. And I say fantastic. Some people are like, well, if they could ban him, they might ban you, dingo. No, I don't talk that crazy, reckless shit. I'm not pissing on people's uh, uh, the mourning of their little children who were murdered in preschool. They, 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 yo, if you're that desperate... To, to gain traction and gain looks, you don't deserve any of this shit. Yeah. Like, it's it's just not okay. He, he, he's been warned and warned and warned and warned. And if I was warned and warned and warned and warned and warned, and then they kicked me off, hey, you'd have to deal with it. These are private companies. So I have no problem with them shutting this piece of shit down. And, uh, you know, you can't make threats against people and, and, and all this stuff. And to, to say that these, these shootings were staged and, and all this stuff, it's just... It's just not okay, man. Yeah, it's just yeah. not okay. And take take your shit to the street corner, asshole. Yeah. You got to go to the soapbox with that. You can't prove any of that. And to say that, yeah, man. Only a matter of time before they throw you off all these fucking platforms, yo. Um, A lot of people brought up uh, uh, Colin Kaepernick again with the Alex Jones situation. And the, the crazy thing about the Kaepernick and then Nike uh, just do it ads that we've been talking about all week is that usually something like this will only, you know, last in the news cycle for 24 hours, 48 hours, 72 hours at the most. But somehow, some way, the Colin Kaepernick Nike ads are still being talked about five days later. And the interesting thing is, is that there could be shootings, church shootings, school shootings, mass shootings that won't be discussed and won't be as offensive as the Colin Kaepernick Nike thing. You right. think about that. Think about that. Like, you know, like the news cycle today in, in this day and age, like 24 hours, 48 hours, and then you, it just goes away. This Kaepernick thing is gone five days. It's more offensive than <laughs> so many terrible things that collectively, no matter what side of the fence or politics you're on, so many things that are way, way, way worse that, that, that just get blips in the news cycle. But oh, yeah. this... Is still being talked about. I like it. I like how it puts uh it puts the onus on Nike because you're not sponsoring Kaepernick based on his play. This motherfucker not in the league anymore. So it ain't about him getting in the league. So now Kaepernick, you're in a great position. Now you could hold Nike like accountable. Like you, the reason why you got behind me is because 
I'm, you elevated me to fucking Huey Newton. You elevated me to Marcus Garvey. So now it ain't about football. So what are you going to do? You know what I'm about, right? You know that I'm about um, dealing with certain issues in the black community that are, you know, problematic. So Nike, now I need resources. You're going to sell, uh, I have an endorsement line. Well, we need resources. We want to take care of this shit. It ain't about football. Fuck football. It's about you taking the lead now as an activist to uh, do what you set out to do. Now you got to truly- But is it, isn't he doing that? Doesn't he do so many different things? He donated a million dollars. You always see, like he doesn't post uh, his shit on World Star, all the things you do, but you'll hear blips about him. This, you'll see other people filming him outside of uh, right. shelters, giving away suits and all this stuff. But he he's not the one putting himself on blast. He's continuing. First of all, I don't think he ever thought that it would turn into this. This is I, good. I, I, I don't think that was his intentions for this this whole thing to be to turn into this and for him to become you know a social justice person. I don't oh. think he ever would have imagined two years ago that he'd be on uh, uh you know like. Just in this position. I, I think, well, I mean, this is where you are now. And it's good that you he's done those things. But now, yo, Nike is behind you. So, you know what I'm saying? Like now they could actually help, right? Because they're not, they're not endorsing you because, oh, you're the greatest football player. You're not even in the fucking league. So what are they endorsing you for? Just to sell clothes of you or, or put a swoosh on a black glove? Get the fuck out of here. But why, why shouldn't they? Nike, Nike's a business. They've yeah, always been a business. I, I'm, I'm saying, but to, if you're going to do that, you're exploiting the protest. It's like, it's good, but Kaepernick needs to hold them accountable and not kind of exploit this shit. Like, yo, you're going to do something tangible. Like, I'm trying to, the reason why I was, I was kneeling is for the But, but I, they, he, he doesn't have to make Nike do any of that shit. They're paying him. He, they he, should do he's it. He's being endorsed by Nike. What he does with that money is is up to him. He, there's I'm, no I'm deal saying like, Nike yo, on we're its paying own. you. We're paying you a mil. Let's just say we're paying you a million dollars. Well, if you pay me a million, you also have to do this. He's not holding them hostage. I'm saying they should do that anyway. But they not they not getting in bed with him for sports. So what are you doing it for? Right, because he but was. But Nike a, does do a lot of charity things. They do tons of charity things. No, but no one. I'm not saying they don't. But I'm saying you got you sponsoring this dude, right, for endorsement deals. What is the shirts about? What what are the sneakers about? He's not playing. So so what's the theme? What what's the theme well, they, of the they, shirts? They sponsor amateur athletes all the time. They've sponsored people in the past that don't play in, in professional sports. Okay, so I would like to know if it's not going to be sports related clothing what's the theme like what's it going to be it's going to be about his activism right shirts and all that so i'm saying yo if you're in bed with me and I, you know that my my thing is political activism and and trying to help shit you can't help me with that uh, you, 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 that's a half cooked you can't help me with that this ain't no fucking this ain't no a half cooked what the fuck you talking about half cooked Yo, he, you, they yo, don't have he, to do shit with him. They're paying him to be so part of, like to be sponsored by them. I've been sponsored by people. You can't hold these people's feet no, to the fire. You, you, they, they could help you. You, I'm not, I'm not saying you, you demand. What do you mean help you? They how, how yo, can they help yo, you? Yo, if if they're paying him, but if Nike is behind him because he's this social activist, what do you think they're behind him for? For what? But for but what? He, he's not the, nice in football. He, well, so so what you sponsoring me for? Why? They, they like where he they like his stance. They, they like, like stance, how he is right? as a person. Right. So my stance is you just you, like my you stance. You don't like it. You you don't like it, right? I think the oppression, the talking about the oppression of black people, black Americans, black people are not oppressed. We are free people. We could do whatever the fuck we want. And that's what I say. I don't like all that shit. I think, yo, he, he's doing good. I understand that, but I'm saying, listen, they know. They know who they're getting in bed with. This ain't about just shirts. They they paying him. They gonna do all that. But if he's saying like, yo, I you know I would like you guys to come to Chicago. I'm doing this initiative. If you could get behind me, yeah. Oh, uh, I didn't know he was doing anything in Chicago. He should. Oh, you with it? Are you with it? <laughs> no, are you with it? Uh, uh, yo, I'm with this now. Now that this big corporation is behind them, it puts the onus on Kaepernick to say, yo, I've been doing this without you. Now, 
Now that a trillion dollar company is with me, you know where I stand. You know how I'm getting down. I would like you to kind of help now, me a little bit. I don't think that's bit. part of a negotiation. I don't know. I don't think that's part. Then why are you getting behind this I, motherfucker then? You're, you're saying two different things. You're saying he, the, Nike should do this, and then you're saying why they get by. You're, yeah, you're, I'm, you're I'm asking, asking a two different things. question. I'm, I'm, I'm saying that as far as a person who's been endorsed in business, is like if they want to sponsor him as an athlete, if they want to sponsor him as a personality, if they want to sponsor him as a ce celebrity, they're going to make you the offer. They might have said, we're going to give you $500,000. He might have said, well, I want uh, seven hundred fifty. dollars They say, we'll give you six hundred. dollars They say, deal. And then you keep it moving. Okay, I understand. I'm just saying it's not sports related. So, I mean, what what kind of shirts are, is it going to be? Or uh, him in a black uh, I think the him shirt, in a black I, Panther I think it's a outfit? Shirt. You know what the shirt is. You've seen the shirt. So people like the image. You you don't like the image. You're criticizing the image. You don't have to rock it. But a lot of people do like it, and a lot of people do support it. I support this. I support what he's doing. So I'm saying Nike supports it too right or is it just a gesture let's move it on uh to the another story that somehow uh spanned the test of time uh the eminem uh a record kamikaze thus far of the recording of this podcast the only person who has responded on wax is machine gun kelly who i never heard of before the eminem uh record in terms of, I, I seen him around. I heard him on Funk Flex, but like he's he this has elevated him because he had the uh, the goal and the balls enough to respond in a uh, although it's not as uh, good uh, lyrically and although he's obviously not as talented as Eminem, uh, he did respond. So he he sort of has gained more respect. Uh, my guy Joe Button. Um, came back on his podcast, which I like, and I'm a fan of Joe. He's a friend of mine. I did his podcast. I'm in a fantasy football league. But Joe came back and said, I've been better than you for the last decade. Um, he has yet to put something down on wax. People were like, yo, you haven't been better than Eminem for the last decade. What the fuck are you talking about? This has been the response. And then these ghouls, these these Halloween, not scary farm uh, South African, I think they call themselves rappers. They're called Die Antwood. These are these people, uh, uh, like they're like, you know, they dress up in, you know, scary costumes and they're like freak shows. And, um, you know, they, they, I know they love hip hop. Um, Eminem dissed them. And then, and, and they came back uh, with a YouTube video. Uh, but you've yet to bust any rhymes. And I have a message to, to anybody this is hip hop. This isn't boxing. This isn't table tennis. This isn't thumb wrestling. Fuck all the talking. Fuck all the tweeting. Fuck the YouTube videos. Fuck all the analyzing. Oh, Eminem's mad. Eminem's old. Eminem's bored. He's living too sheltered of a life. Eminem's sober. This is hip hop. If you respect this hip hop shit and you're making money off this hip hop shit, fuck all the excuses. Fuck all the reasons, the thoughts. Either spit some shit or keep your fucking mouth shut because he only went after people that have spoken on him. So if, you, if you're if you with hip hop and you're an MC and you're a rapper and you're making money off hip hop, either bow down and be like, yo, I don't want any smoke with him. He's better than me. I'm not on his level. I'm a fan. I'm on his dick and all that. Or shut the fuck up. These die Antwood people with the videos and their, the weird voices and they got makeup on and tattoos and... They're like scary people on some Marilyn Manson weirdo meth head shit. Spit some rhymes, Duke. Spit some rhymes. My man Joe Button, you're talented. Spit rhymes or keep it moving. Man, this shit, I don't know. I'm done with this shit. I don't even know what, what that shit's about, but uh, Eminem is, is, is proving himself. I don't know why he felt the need to, to kind of diss these guys. You've already... You, That's you, what he does, though. But, like, I, like people were saying, like on his last record, like he needs to do this, he needs to do that. So he came back and he gave everybody that super spray, and he lined them all up, and now everybody's complaining about it. It's like, yo, this is this is this is the spirit of this hip hop shit, and motherfuckers making YouTube videos and tweeting and podcasting and all that. Fuck all that. Yo, it, 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 the, the only way to get back at him is like what that kid Kelly did. Spit some shit, lay it on the ground, or don't say another word about him. Tyler, the creator, 
you know, these die ant wood people, all this bullshit. Like, yo, it don't have to be no fighting. It doesn't have to turn into no craziness. Yo, it's the competitiveness of hip hop. People like analyzing, oh, he, why he's got a beard. Oh, he's sober. He's not as good as he used to be. Okay, well, he ruined you in one verse. Like, your entire career is not as good uh, as one verse from Eminem. So don't, you can't say anything. Don't try to talk shit. Don't diss. Don't tweet. Don't subliminal diss. Don't subliminal tweet and all that shit. Either spit or be gone. Yeah, but they don't have the talent level to, to do that. So And it's a new time. So, I mean, Eminem is ripping these guys, but these guys are not, not uh, on his level. So, you know, hip hop, it doesn't have that, uh, that spirit anymore, man, with cats is going at each other. It's a different thing. It's the young cats now. This is how they do. Let them do their thing. At least, we, at least we had ours. At least we had that competitive spirit, cats spitting at each other. These young dudes ain't like that. And that's what it is. What, one, of the, one of the other crazy things in hip hop this week is, I didn't even know they had a, like a thing. But I, I guess, you know, within the Pusha T, Drake, a uh, beef, uh, uh, and them going back and forth. Kanye was somehow linked into it. Uh, uh, and Kanye, I mean, this is this is the most unhip hop thing ever. This again, Kanye issued an apology on Twitter to Drake, saying, "I apologize for this. I apologize for that. I didn't mean for it to be this. I didn't mean for it to be that." What's wrong with a phone call? What's wrong with a FaceTime? <laughs> you, you know, I thought you were the best, Kanye. I thought you you talk your shit and all that stuff. Like now, now you apologizing. To a one man over Twitter. If I'm Drake, I'm like, I mean, fuck this dude, man. You, if, if, if you think you did something wrong, call me. Call <laughs> me. Don't put this shit on Twitter. Uh -huh. Call me up. Like, I, I don't understand. Like, like everything is in, in social media. Like, you're apologizing. And if you did apologize to a man to man, mention that in the tweet. Because other than that, you just, you're just, it's just, Kanye West is it's just, he's just whack, man. He's just fucking whack. Like, oh, like. Geez. I mean, what the fuck are you doing? You're you're apologizing on on Twitter to the dude. <laughs> Everything is different now, man. It's like this is what these dudes do, man. It's crazy. But he has so many followers, so he figured, yo, I need to put this out there, let everybody know, you know, his uh, energy, my energy towards you. I shouldn't have done that. So he letting everybody know, not just uh, Drake or whatever. I mean, it's different. You gotta look at these cats, not from our shit. Like, yo, this is their shit, and he, and this is how they get down, man. <laughs> It's sad, but yo, that's how it is. All right, see, I am Rapport Stereo Podcast. Uh, week one, uh, fantasy football is underway. Know your guys, get your guys, pick your guys. Uh, uh, you know, I'll be on the front lines all weekend on Twitter, on social media. I am Rapport Stereo Podcast. G Moody, last name rhymes with duty. Uh, I am the Gringo Man, Dingo Miles. Jordan, take us out of here with something really nice. Something, uh, how do you say, something real proper. Out. Peace.